Welcome back, guys, to another episode of Sailing Papillon. Some of you may be wondering if we are independently wealthy or how the heck we are able to afford to refit the old girl. Let me just say this. We are neither on vacation or just wealthy, but we are spending a month in paradise. And what we are exactly up to, we will for sure share with you at the end of this video. Hang tight. For now, let's get back to installing Papillon's chain plates in Mexico as we prepare to leave her again to refuel that kitty. Wah, wah. So what we are up to here today, we are going to be adding in the fillets around the chain plates and putting a little bit of epoxy filler behind uh, the stainless steel chain plates where it meets up to the hull of the boat because we couldn't quite get that perfectly shaped to the boat. Uh, the old ones weren't either, so it doesn't surprise me. We are going to put fillets in so that instead of having the fiberglass when we put it on the vacuum bag, trying to go up a steep incline and then over and back down, we're going to have nice uh, angles going up to the edges of stainless steel. Uh, the other day, which I think is about three days ago, when we did the starboard side of the boat, we attempted to do these two steps together partially to conserve peel ply. I'm not going to do that again. That was, we started maybe an hour earlier and didn't finish until after 8 p.m. Uh, it was terrible, and we're going to try making this less terrible. <laughs> so uh, I am now going to wash our wall with acetone, and that way we will be ready to start putting epoxy on. Uh, we'll put that, the acetone on, we'll leave the boat to let it dry for about 15 minutes and then it'll be epoxy time so that'll get us up to four chain plates and in another but when we come back from the airbnb it should be cured enough to where we can put at least the upper edge to our rigging finally it's, it'll be like eight months since the top of our rig was held on with stainless steel rather than rope <laughs> so uh a little bit of peace of mind i'm sure ashley's going to be excited to have that Oh, God. And I've been removing a bunch of the old butyl from the uh, starboard side. This is just one of the little wads of it. Butyl balls. It butyl sounds balls. fun. Butyl balls. Um, probably doesn't taste good. Pulling off peel ply here from uh, yesterday, getting the end plates in here filleted. It's looking decently good here. A few spots we'll put a little filler in. All right, now for taking off peel ply for the upper chain plate. Uh, just a few spots where it's not ideal. It looks solid though. Yeah.
Okay, so I am uh, sanding piece four. One, two, and three are behind me, uh, right there. And I've got 80 grit going. This is what I have left of the good stuff, which is gold, stick it, paper. For whatever reason, I, I bought a massive roll of 220 and I already had a massive roll of 220 on the boat, so. <laughs> um, I'm using itty bitty pieces to get into the crevices of the rub rail here. And uh, it's a slog. It's going very slowly. Um, but the difference between the paper of Diablo on a Ryobi cat sander and the gold stuff is unbelievably better. This stuff is so much better. So it's taking me longer than I wanted. Um, but piece four of six. And on one of the other pieces, we have a really large piece of rot we have to try to fix. And this is going up there. And you can hear the guys, I guess, with machine guns in the background. Uh, we're right next to a naval base and they practice every afternoon. So we get to hear that and it's kind of interesting. In the mornings, we've been grinding the hull from roughly six to, I don't know, 9.30 or 10. Then we'll have a little bit of a breakfast and then Travis works on the chain plates, getting those polished because those weren't done to our need. And then I'm jumping on teak work. And we pretty much do that to exhaustion. And then we go back, have dinner, go to bed and rinse, wash and repeat. That's, <laughs> that's been what it's been like working on a boat in the hard in Tapachula, Mexico or Puerto Madero, Mexico. Today has been a lovely day compared to some of our others, much cooler. Yeah, it, it dumped rain last night, like buckets. We had rain coming in from the ceiling of our Airbnb and underneath the doors too, because there's a gap like this big underneath our doors. Um, it's been an experience for sure, but I am very ready to get this done. And Travis and I were just talking earlier of how we're even gonna do that. So the reason we removed the rub rail was the bolts to our chain plates are beautifully behind the teak rub rail. So it was kind of a forced project to have to get to, which, you know, we didn't really mind doing at the time. And now we're finishing it up and we're talking about how we're actually gonna do it. And once the teak is sanded enough and good to go, the back end of it's gonna have varnish too, or not varnish, but um, all wood uh, two part. There's a lot of, as with every boat job, there's so many levels of steps that you have to take before you get to the final product. And we're just at the beginning of the Teak final product. Um, but I am looking forward to applying the all wood because Mark, a good friend, talks beautifully about it and I've seen it. So I'm, try I'm trying to do him proud here with the Teak. It's just, I have no idea when the last time this Teak was actually even touched. But I know it was at least seven years. And eight probably, now. Yeah, eight now. And I'm really glad we pulled it off when we did because the stainless screws that were through it were rotting it already. So like everything with this boat, I think we got it at the right time, but it's one of those things you have to stay on top of the projects or they, you'll be upside down financially and mentally. So <laughs> we're very close on both counts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we are very much. Okay. So, um, right here, we've got a bit of rot in our teak. And so what I'm going to be attempting to do, uh, is drill out a hole to put in this little plug here so that when we screw in our screw, it doesn't pull out because of the rotten teak. Uh, under Ashley's supervision and uh, direction. Yes, I haven't done this before and Ashley has, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at that rotten wood come out. It's just not too bad. At least it's dried out a lot of it, but yeah, it is. Okay, going to our bigger bit. see 
some drier wood coming out of there. And we're doing this mostly because the screws we're going to be putting in, we want them to go into nice, dry, supple wood, not rotted wood. And we're doing our best to maintain the integrity of where it's got to go. And when you're plugging these guys, you make sure to get your grain going the same direction as the grain that you're putting it into. So it goes this way, as you can see, grain. But we don't have, we're going to do something you normally don't do with teak plugs, is that we are going to put a little tiny bit of epoxy on this to put it in. Because these, these aren't ever going to be pulled out again, hopefully. If they get pulled out, it's because something went very badly. <laughs> Pretty much. So. All right. Well, we'll film the next step when we get there. But we're going to do this about, I don't know, 100 times. <laughs> I hope not. So the most important thing to do with a epoxy layup is to get all the air bubbles out. Here I am using a roller to press out air bubbles. Uh, looking pretty good here with the vacuum bag uh, butyl taped up at the top and peel ply is on and cutting out the breather uh, now I'm putting in the ports which I forgot to do before butyl taping the vacuum bag all the way down so having to reach over the top and now redoing the butyl tape up at the top and uh, trying to press everything down so that uh, we have a good seal. It uh, couldn't quite get the breather to go where I wanted it, but uh, it uh, worked well. Uh, we've got a vacuum pump, which I'm hooking up right now, and that'll pull the air out and should press everything down tight. Let's see how many leaks I need to find. What do you think? Well, I, we're starting to pull vacuum. I still haven't got it sealed up well enough, but I haven't even gone all the way around once yet. Oh, look at that big hole. As promised, what we've been up to to make money for the kitty. Here we go. Well, we are about ready. Uh, Travis is getting a shower right now, and uh, yep, about 15 minutes or so, we'll be picking up our charter guests and 
heading over to another island. It's our first charter together, he and I, in a beautiful location, and we've been working our butts off to make sure everything looks as best as it can. The boat, everything's functioning. Thank goodness Jason was here because this is his boat and uh, he was able to help us with everything that needed helping with. So, very excited and ready to go, but also very, very exhausted. So, whew, let's hope for the best.